Today, folks, the forums are lit. We got to dive down to the most pivotal, fascinating earnings, especially when we're talking about those cigar butts, as Warren Buffett would define them when it comes to things like 3M, Verizon, some of these dividend players we've been talking about, and if they're still worth picking up after earnings. But we got to talk about tech first and foremost here. My God, after the crazy earnings we saw with Tesla, even though the earnings were good, the stock dropped. Let's see what happened with Google, what happened with Microsoft, because these are some of my favorite stocks to follow. Some of the stocks that make up the S&P 500 at this point, the big seven that have been driving everything and I'm grateful again my fiance holds some individual positions in these but my god look at old Google here I really am driving off my fiance's portfolio at this point when it comes to this growth but look at this look at this this thing is up five six percent in after hours we'll see if it continues to hold up at this you know dollar twenty nine dollar thirty range when we're talking about just excessive returns here that we're not seeing in the other tech giants and that's probably because Google has not been overbought. These advertiser players have this kind of lingering demeanor in the community that in recessionary periods, people just spend less money on marketing and advertising. And of course we're seeing that, but these conglomerates are proving that the markets are still growing, that yes, we might see a soft landing here, folks, especially when it's coming to these tech companies. Even if a recession's announced, do you really think these stocks are gonna go back to the pivotal lows we've seen unless something absolutely dramatic happens? Probably not. First and foremost, let's just take a look at the segments driving the growth. And then of course, we'll take a look at the broader view of the, the total earnings here. But I mean, you're talking about pretty much every segment seeing growth. Google search and other, that's been seeing growth. YouTube ads has actually been growing by a few hundred million here. The only thing seeing a slight decline is the Google network. But all in all, cloud services, it's, we're gonna see this with Azure. On the Microsoft side of things, Google Cloud is up pretty dramatically from 6.2 billion to 8.0 or 8.031 billion, which is just astounding numbers. Take a look at the total revenue here, because on a year-over-year -year basis, this is kind of the story that we're seeing because we're not seeing the double digit in the teens kind of revenue growth that we experienced, right? We still went from 69 billion to 74, astounding. 7% uh, revenue change here. But where the real story comes into play, yeah, obviously revenues are slowing down, but we're still getting growth. That's a beauty in a market environment like this, considering how high interest rates are, but the operating margin is where things get intriguing because they bumped up a percentage point from 28 to 29. This is where we're talking about layoffs, refining and dining the business like Netflix did, stopping password sharing worked uh, beautifully to their favor, even though I t attested it and I, I'm not having a Netflix account. But nonetheless, Google's trying to block things like ad block here on Google or on Chrome. Some of the browsers doing everything they can to inch out more margin, more dime in that, that bottom pocket of their book and it's working man it is working it's likely we're going to see this with all the tech companies how we're seeing it with microsoft here as well but microsoft however in after hours is trading down even after good earnings it is starting to rally back it's barely down a percentage point but why did it drop well the only conclusion i could come to was the fact that you know they're trading above their all-time highs where google's just not these companies have been chased so freaking hard at this point that even the good earnings are kind of boring. People are just like, eh, we've made our, our crazy percentage gains this year. Could you imagine buying this mega giant, you know, at the beginning of 2023, be up 50, 60 freaking percent. It's absolutely just bonkers. So people are taking profits. We saw it with Tesla. I mean, even Tesla's earnings weren't that bad. We'll take a look at some of the segments here. I mean, you look at Azure and cloud services, look at that. Like Google, we're seeing a 31% increase. Pretty much most of their segments have been seeing growth. Xbox and services are still kind of declining a bit here. I'm not declining but the growth is just non-existent. That's why I really hope they can get that purchase done uh, with Activision Blizzard. That'd be really cool if Microsoft could become vertically integrated. They're already a monopoly anyway, so just let them do what they're doing, damn it. But taking a look, revenues here, yeah, stagnated on the product side, going from 17.3 billion to 15.5. Total revenues, however, did grow thanks to services and other. Obviously, cloud computing is what's saving the day. It's nice that all these companies were able to integrate into the technological future. You know, everyone's going to subscription-based platforms, you know, all all the Windows products from Excel to, to Word, all of that is subscription based now. And they did that at a very good time while things were going great because now things are hard and that's what's making up, I think, the most of the difference here. And gross margin, I mean, you take a look, that's increased uh, slightly here. It's generally not like the most explosive earnings, but neither was Google's, right? But there are enough to say that, hey, this isn't as bad of a recession as people were anticipating. Hell, it might not even be a recession at all as far as we're taking a look at in this moment without another black swan event or without them hiking interest rates, dare I say, much farther than where we're sitting. But taking a look at the dividend payers, 3M, these have been largely discussed amongst amongst the Discord and YouTube and obviously across the forums and stock twits and Reddit. And everyone's been like, oh my God, are these the buying opportunity of a lifetime? My answer to this is no. I mean, this thing's trading down so much at this point that how much more can you beat it into the ground with a 4.5? 5.46% yield and 11 PE. 3M has been struggling with a lot of factors. Their earnings beat, it, but they were including a huge environmental charge because you know they came in better than expected. Eventually, what happens is analysts lower expectations so freaking much 
that you just can't go any lower with. And eventually they beat what analysts were expecting. It drove the stock up 5% today, but it came in uh, better than expected, uh, excluding that charge for the environmental remediation. They have so many lawsuits under their belts when it comes to like, uh, you know, the sound blockers you put in your ear that were given to the army. And I think thousands of people ended up getting like hearing problems because it didn't work. But the full year financial guidance was raised too, which is great. The stock is jumping in early trading. This just isn't the most resilient company that it used to be. This comes the problem with like retail products and services in the industrial sector. I mean, you take a look, let me zoom my head out of the way here a little bit. Net sales coming in at 8.32 billion versus 8.7 this time last year. You know, their operating expenses are going crazy, probably because some of the lawsuits, 12.2 billion versus 3 billion. Um, some of these might be like off expenses, but I think some of these lawsuits, they actually have to pay out like these crazy amounts of billions of dollars over time. So again, it's one of those things where it's been beaten so hard into the ground, probably not going to go much lower. If you're looking for yield, I think it, it might be sustainable. It seems like everything is, is trucking along as far as I can tell, but I, I'd rather focus on Verizon. It's a company I can easily easierly understand, not really easily as a word, but in the telecom giants, if I were you, not financial advice, I stick to the Canadian ones because we'll look at a few of the things hindering Verizon here. On the Canadian side of the border, because they're more monopolistic, there's less competition, you know, they're they're getting way better user growth, even though they're being hindered by the interest raised environment. But at a 7.6% yield, you could expect to get a full rate of return just off the dividend, and they still can afford to pay it. And a lot of the reason that they were able to like rally after earnings, not by much, but they're, they're at least not dropping at this point, right? Has a lot to do with sign. Ups. I mean, you take a look, Verizon earnings uh, fall from a year earlier, but top estimates uh, and revenue obviously missed. But also helping Verizon stock was that the company added 8,000 wireless post-paid phone subscribers. Analysts had estimated Verizon would lose about 18,000 subscribers. But all in all, the earnings came in at about $1.21 on an adjusted share. Profit for Verizon, unfortunately, fell about 7%. But we can take a look at what's kind of killing some of the profit margins. And as mentioned, you pay attention to the total expense here on their interest, sitting at $1.28 billion. It's almost doubled from where it was last year. And that's the big problem with these infrastructure-loaded heavy companies. You know, the revenues, everything was relatively flat. Again, nothing crazy going on on that aspect. But again, you could pretty much make your full rate of return knowing that they do have a lot of room to still cover that dividend after this earnings, which was nice to see, right? Taking a look at the assets, that's where we're going to see at least they're sitting on a whopping $379 billion of dollars in assets, which is crazy to think about, but that long-term liability, man, at $232 billion is pretty excessive. So that's where we're going to see the pain. That's the story moving forward, I think, with the telecom giants. We'll see the same thing on the Canadian side of the border. But again, if you can find the telecoms that are still able to grow some of their revenues, again, user acquisition, that stuff, which why I still like Canada better for that. I think once we get to the other side of this interest raised environment, as I mentioned, I'm pretty confident at some point in a year or two, we're going to start seeing interest rates come down. And that's when these stocks will really start to truck back to the upside, because that's when that interest on that debt starts to come down and that'll start baking into their bottom line but i do love telecom and i think it is trading pretty favorably here but those are my opinions those are my thoughts and i'll pass it off to you i'd love to know what you think about these earnings in that comment section below and consider subscribing because on friday when we do the live stream we'll be recapping all the week's earnings and having a real discussion about it but on that note stay cool stay awesome and as always i look forward to catching you in the next one